What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy Zither here, and I am back at it again to drop What If Naruto Was an Uchiha? Now, I know, this What If has been done so many times by so many other amazing What If creators, and honestly, their stories have been good as well. However, I'm here to say that, uh, you know, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna waltz on in there on the scene, even though this What If has been done a million times already, slam my massive schlong on the table and say, nope, this is what really happened. So, yeah, without any further ado, let's uh <laughs> let's get started. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Okay, so like many of you guys are probably expecting, we are going to be starting off our what-if scenario the day that Naruto was born. However, previous to this, I'm going to have to establish who it is in the relationship that is an Uchiha. Now, obviously, seeing as we know that Kushina is, well, an Uzumaki, I'm going to be leaving that there simply because of her chakra pool, and, you know, it's pretty, it's a pretty big chakra pool. And instead, I'm just going to be making Minato have black hair and be an Uchiha. Now, many of you guys are like, yo, that's kind of broken. If he's an Uchiha, won't he have the Sharingan and be able to stop the nine tails well let's just say that he only has it up until the three tomoe let's say that he never had no tragic thing happen to him that caused him to awaken the mongekyo all right let's just say that that happens and so the only real difference that will be happening to the story from that point to here is essentially just that his name isn't going to be the yellow flash of the leaf it's going to be the black flash of the leaf now that title i honestly don't know if i'm going to be giving it to naruto quite yet if i'm going to be making him that fast or more of a, of a long range fighter yet but i guess time will only tell what it is that i'm going to be doing with the scenario that being said though guys, if you guys do want to put any of your input into what I should do with the series, then please make sure to comment down some ideas below. I'd love to read them and see what you guys think would actually happen had Naruto become an Uchiha after you hear my first part. So yeah, Naruto obviously taken by Obito. Obito is of course going to be like holding uh, little Naruto within his arms as he basically holds an explosive tag and puts it on Naruto. He would proceed to tell Minato to step away from the Jinchuriki as Minato would basically use Flying Raijin to grab Naruto and take off the little uh, blanket that he has on him, having the little um, explosion tag on him. As Minato would turn towards Obito and Obito would basically grab Kushina, basically getting out of there with Kamui, as he would proceed to extract the nine tails after this minato would drop a baby naruto in his little cradle thing and put on the hokage robe as he would go out there and pretty much proceed to fold obito like a lawn chair he proceeds to use flying light fly, he proceeds to use flying raijin level two as he essentially just caught um i really was about to say that i, I was probably going to get going to get demonetized if i finish that sentence he proceeds to you know slam his little schlong all over obito's face and slam the rasengan into his back causing Obito to get knocked out. After that, the Nine Tails stuff basically just goes as it does in canon. When Kushina jumps in to basically protect the baby Naruto from the claw, Minato does as well, and this causes both of their deaths. Now, in this version of events, I'm pretty sure many of you guys are like, all right, so what happens next? Now, due to Naruto being an Uchiha and Minato kind of just realizing, yep, my son's an Uchiha, he's also an Uzumaki, probably gonna be pretty broken. I might as well seal the whole thing into him. So, uh... Yeah, he seals the entirety of the Nine Tails into Naruto. Now, honestly, I could have just said that it's half only, but the entirety, half, what real difference does it make? He's just going to be broken later on. Who knows? Um, it really just depends on what I want to do. Actually, you know what? Retcon what I just said. He just gets half. I, I honestly don't really want to have to deal with any of the ramifications of giving him the full Nine Tails. So, yeah, just gets half. Minato seals the other half. And after this, we would essentially just have a Kushina who pretty much tells Hiruzen to take care of baby Naruto. After this, we would essentially have a Naruto growing up, or actually before he even grows up, would actually be approached by Sasuke's mother. I believe his mom's name is Mikoto Uchiha, and you know, his father is Fuga Fugaku, or something like that, right? 
Now, during this time, obviously in the normal version of canon, Mikoto actually wanted to adopt Naruto because of the fact that, well, you know, she knew Kushina and they were both friends. So, you know, when Naruto was basically, you know, just shun away from everybody, she wanted to adopt him. But Haruzen was like, nah, I got it and proceeded to pretty much give this man spoiled milk and blankets. So, yeah, in this version, Naruto's an Uchiha. So when Haruzen sees that an Uchiha wants to adopt Naruto and raise him as, as her own, he actually obliges. It'd be better for uh, Uchiha Naruto to grow up with his fellow Uchihas because this Naruto was actually born with with uh, black hair and obviously the blue eyes that you guys saw in the thumbnail. Now, many of you guys are probably like, yo, why is uh, Itachi the cover of the thumbnail? That's not Itachi. That's, that's an Uchiha Naruto. And you're going to see exactly why Naruto looks like that later on. I'm probably going to finish establishing that by, establishing that by the end of this part. So with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so for the following next couple of years, Naruto and Sasuke would basically get raised together. Up until when Naruto's four years old, Naruto and Sasuke would actually hang out with each other quite a bit. And when it comes to Sasuke and Itachi's relationship, that would pretty much be the same, with the only difference being that the one who's usually cradling Naruto would be Mikoto, because of the simple fact that, well, you know, if she's gonna adopt Naruto, she's gonna basically do the job right. So Naruto would be accepted into the Uchiha household off rip, and Fugaku would actually have big, big plans for Naruto. They finally have a giant asset for the Uchiha, you know, compound. They have the literal nine tails within themselves. That was probably one of the only reasons that uh, Hiruzen didn't want to, you know, have Naruto grow up there. However, it's kind of like he's an Uchiha, and if anything happens, Hiruzen has his uh, his little person. He has some people who can probably stop it. So that's kind of just what Hiruzen's thinking that maybe if he trusts them with the Nine Tails, the Uchiha will kind of like calm down a little bit. And so he would convince the elders to let Naruto live over there. And this is when Naruto would essentially just be allowed to live in the Uchiha compound. Because of this, Naruto's life would actually improve quite a bit, with Naruto actually being looked at by looked after by Fugaku, Itachi, and Mikoto Uchiha. Now, when it comes to Sasuke and Naruto, they would both play a little bit, and, Ita and Sasuke would always feel sort of superior to Naruto because of the simple fact that he's actually the real son of, well, Fugaku, and Naruto's just some adopted kid as Sasuke sees it. Obviously, they're going to grow up being sort of rivals and friends type thing, where they have like a sort of uh, sibling relationship with each other, but Sasuke's always had some sort of a disdain towards Naruto because of the simple fact that he he always felt as if Fugaku chose Naruto over him, his own flesh and blood. And so we would essentially just have a Naruto growing up in that household where Naruto would kind of just do his own thing, really mind his own business. And it isn't until they both turn about to the age of four years old when Fugaku finally starts showing a little bit more favoritism towards Naruto. Once Naruto turns four years old, Fugaku basically starts training Naruto. And so by the time that Sasuke is four years old and he's still basically developing as a kid, you know, hanging out with Itachi whenever he can, just playing around with the other kids, Naruto ever since he turned four, basically had to start learning how to become a shinobi from a young, young age. That means taijutsu, ninjutsu, and Fugaku would even train him in how to unlock his chakra nature's meaning. He would want Naruto to learn how to be able to use normal chakra and not be pestered by the uh, blockants of the Ninetales. And so, Naruto would get trained by Fugaku and Itachi. And by the time that Naruto was 8 years old, Naruto had a pretty good mastery over his chakra, meaning he can water walk, tree walk. He has a good, a good uh, understanding of wind nature as well as fire release because of the simple fact that he's an Ochiha household, so it's like, it kind of just became second nature to him after being around Fugaku so many time, so much time. And when it comes to his shuriken prowess, Naruto's actually really good at it because of the fact that Itachi's actually sort of a big brother um, uh, person in Naruto's life. Because of the fact that Fugaku really wants Naruto to become powerful so he can be an asset to the Uchiha someday, he always forces, uh, what's it called, Itachi to essentially be around Naruto, helping train him, helping Naruto develop as a shinobi in and of itself. As, you know, Naruto just grows up around Itachi a whole lot more than Sasuke, this would cause Sasuke to develop a sort of, like, hatred towards Naruto. Because as Sasuke sees it, some random adopted kid just came in out of nowhere and basically took his entire family from him. Sasuke feels jealous of Naruto, jealous of the fact that Naruto gets to train with Fugaku and Itachi, but what Sasuke doesn't understand is that Naruto doesn't want to train. Naruto, of course, wants to become a shinobi and knows who his father is because Fugaku would have told him it's the Black Flash, 
Minato of the Hidden Leaf Village, the former Hokage. That means that, you know, the tensions between the, the Uchiha compound and the village aren't actually that high because of the fact that a literal Uchiha was made the uh, the uh, Hokage. So the tensions between the Leaf Village and everything is way lower than how it was in canon. Meaning that an attack on or like the little massacre and stuff like that would only really happen has, if, not, if Donzo was to basically continue to push the uchiha more and more and more and we obviously know that donzo being the person who he is that slimy little bastard is of course still going to do that so as i said naruto would basically continue growing up getting trained by fugaku and itachi and when it comes to naruto's uh kind of relationship with itachi it would be a very strange one because although itachi does look at naruto as if he's like a friend or like a similar to a brother in the role Itachi loves Sasuke more because that's his real flesh and blood. And when Itachi hangs out with Naruto, he kind of just has a little bit of a disdain for him. Even though he shouldn't because Naruto's not doing anything wrong. It's not his fault. It's Fugaku's. The fact that all this is happening is mostly his. Because Fugaku having the f having uh, you know Minato's son with him and having the fact that he's also the Nine Tails in Cherokee really wants to train Naruto to become a very powerful person in the Leaf Village. So that Naruto could one day become a Hokage and take the Uchiha out of the combat which they have been restricted to. Now, obviously Minato would have done that but he wasn't a Hokage long enough to be able to, you know, do all of that and assume that stuff and as a role with the Hokage. He never got approved by the village council people. And so Minato, basically, while trying to do his best, wouldn't wasn't able to do enough. So, with that being said, after this, Naruto and Sasuke would both be eight years old. And it's on this day where Naruto would basically just be coming home one day after training. He would sit down as he would go outside, and after training with Itachi, Naruto would be forced to train with Fugaku as well, trying to perfect his fire style. Sasuke would run out of the house as he would say, Hey father, can I can I uh, show you my fire style? As Fugaku would basically just tell Sasuke to show it. As Sasuke would be like, Fire style! Fireball Jutsu! He would shoot at a giant fireball. Actually, no, it would be a very tiny one. As Fugaku would simply look at Sasuke and be like, okay, cool. As he would then turn towards Naruto with a smirk and like a proud expression on his face. At this point, Fugaku looks at Naruto as if he was more of his son than Sasuke himself. He seems more proud of Naruto. Because even though in the original, we basically came to find out that Fugaku loved Sasuke more, in this version, Fugaku just is blinded by how powerful and how much potential Naruto has as a ninja. Uh, an Uchiha, the son of Minato, an Uzumaki, the Nine Tails in Cherokee. Naruto seems to have all the cards in his favor to become a powerful, broken ninja in the future. So, after this, Naruto's told to perform it as he would look at Sasuke, look down at the ground, and then say, Fire style! Fireball Jutsu! As he would shoot a gigantic fireball, double the size of, no, quadruple the size of Sasuke's, putting Sasuke Sasuke's fireball to shame, as Fugaku would look at Sasuke and say, whenever you're as good as this, you can come train with us, but for now, go, go train. As Sasuke would just look down at the ground and give Naruto an angry look. Naruto would just be looking down at the ground, so he didn't notice this, and Naruto would kind of just continue training. For the next couple of years, they would of course go into the academy, and this is where Naruto, being an Uchiha, and of course, you know, Donzo being the person that he is, he still ends up telling everybody that Naruto is this demon or whatever, but since he is an Uchiha, and in this version, people are actually going to know that, you know, actually, I'm not going to say that people are going to know. Only only uh, Naruto's family, meaning Fugaku, is actually going to know about, you know, Naruto being the son of Minato. So, when people find out that Naruto is the Nine Tails in Shuriki, they would begin to treat him wrong. Basically doing the same things that they would do, would have done in canon, meaning like, just basically treating Naruto as an outcast is exactly what they would do to Naruto. This would lead to Naruto developing a little bit of a hatred towards the village, but he would still have a bunch of girls who actually think that Naruto is quite cute. Because of the fact that because Naruto has been hanging out with Itachi for so many years, Naruto ended up loving Itachi like a big brother. Now, even though Fugaku gives Naruto food, he puts, he basically helps him out when he gets damaged and stuff like that. Itachi, in Naruto's eyes, is the one who always seems to be there for Naruto when he needs emotional help. Naruto seems to only have one person to talk to about how he doesn't like training, and it's that, and that is Itachi. But Itachi tells Naruto not to give up. His potential is through the roofs and that if he continues training, maybe someday he can get stronger than Fugaku and show him that, you know, maybe 
you know, in this world, all there is isn't just strength. As Naruto would think about this, and of course, just continue, you know, loving Itachi, basically. Naruto would get his hair done exactly like Itachi, and that is why he looks like what he looks like in the thumbnail, that Itachi-Naruto like mix-up thing. In case you guys need to look at what he looks like, I'm going to be putting a picture up on screen right about now. Alright, so if you guys look up on screen right now, you guys should be seeing an image of what Naruto Uchiha looks like. That being said, we would essentially just have Naruto, um, what's it called, just growing up as during the times of the academy, a bunch of the girls have a very distinct liking towards Naruto because of the fact that he has blue eyes and the black hair of the Uchihas. So a lot of people actually think that Naruto is even cooler than Sasuke. Plus on top of that, Naruto is even stronger than Sasuke. So by the time that Naruto is in the academy, Naruto would basically always be kind of the kid that shows off. He would have even more potential than Itachi himself, seeing as he's been training way longer than him. And when it comes to his strength, he is extremely broken. Naruto has a perfect control over fire style and wind style. And with his taijutsu and like shuriken throwing skills, he's basically on par with Itachi by the time that he was in the academy. Just give him like an extra year, and that's pretty much where Naruto stands in terms of his abilities when it comes to being a ninja. So when it comes to Sasuke versus Naruto, he pretty much always overshadows Sasuke in every aspect of the way. And the only two people who always look at Sasuke are Sakura and like, actually I said two people, but there's like a couple people who like Sasuke more than Naruto. The girls who like the black eyes and the emo vibe, you know, they like Sasuke more. But people like Ino and stuff like that end up liking Naruto more. Now, when it comes to Hinata getting saved by Naruto, that still does happen, so Hinata does have that same weird affection towards Naruto that she has in canon. That being said though, this is when, you know, they would continue going to the academy. And during this time, none of the real uh, Uchiha members would really understand this, but Danzo would basically be pulling strings trying to get, you know, the Uchiha to get angry with the village, causing a coup d'etat to happen within the Uchiha village. Now, this is about one year into Naruto and Sasuke's time in the academy. Another year would pass where the tensions would basically grow to be as high as they were at the point in the original Naruto story, to the point where Itachi now has to kill everybody in the Uchiha compound. And so, one day, when Naruto and Sasuke are basically coming home from school, also, I, I, I don't know if I really explained it too well, but essentially, you know, Donzo's being a snake, and he's just causing a bunch of tensions to uh, well up within the Uchiha compound. He's causing the, the village elders to not trust the Uchiha. He's basically causing the Uchiha to have a limited access to certain things. And the Hokage is really just letting it happen. So this is brewing a bunch of anger and tension within the village, leading to a similar situation of what happened in canon. So this would lead to Itachi being tasked with slaughtering his entire clan for the betterment of the village. And so, one day when Naruto and Sasuke finished up with, the, with their day at the tuning, uh, no, not the tuning, but the academy, Naruto and Sasuke would both basically be walking home. Now, when they are walking home, they would end up basically taking it very slow. And on their way there, Sasuke would challenge Naruto to a fight, or to spar, to which Naruto would agree, and Sasuke would rush at Naruto. They would basically be on this little dirt, on this like little little uh it's it's a good patch of land and it's just a bunch of dirt right it has like a couple bumpy things in, in here and there because you know it's just a random road and so we would basically just have naruto standing there as sasuke rushes at him and sasuke would throw a punch now naruto would dodge it and smile as sasuke would mistake this for naruto thinking that he's better than him so sasuke would get angry and say how dare you as he would take out a kunai and try to slash at naruto Naruto would basically jump back as he would throw kunais at Sasuke, which Sasuke would be able to dodge because Naruto purposefully didn't hit Sasuke. He's trying to get Sasuke to think that, you know, Sasuke's strong as well. And so, Sasuke would basically just rush at Naruto once again as Naruto just keeps on dodging the blows, lets a couple of the attacks hit him whenever they're not too deadly, and Naruto and Sasuke just bar for the next hour, causing them to get late and arrive home late. This is when afterwards, Sasuke would actually look at Naruto and be like, you know, that was a good fight, thinking that they're somewhat even, because Naruto kind of let it happen. And so, Naruto would offer Sasuke to go get some ramen after this, and Sasuke begrudgingly would kind of accept, thinking that maybe this kid isn't as bad as he thought. 
And so Sasuke and Naruto end up going to get the ramen and stuff like that. And when they're finally on their way home, they would arrive at the Uchiha compound gate as Sasuke would smell the blood in the air. Naruto would as well and he would immediately teleport over or body flicker over to the house which they live in. As he would arrive and you would basically see Itachi standing there with the sword as he would wipe off the blood of their parents. Naruto would say, how could you, how could you do this? Those were my parents! As Itachi would turn towards Naruto and say, those weren't your parents. We were never your family. We were simply pretending because you have the nine tails within you. As Naruto would look at Itachi, eyes widened, and Itachi would simply grin as he would turn towards Naruto and with a little bit, uh, just a slight hint of regret, just barely a tad. He would rush at Naruto as he would slash straight across Naruto's chest. Naruto's body would fall down to the ground as blood would simply just start spewing everywhere and Sasuke would rush in there as we would just have a Naruto sitting there as Itachi just slashed Naruto's chest wide open. Now Naruto's eyes would flash red and the chakra of the nine tails would basically begin to heal Naruto's wound, not letting him die. Barely saving Naruto's life by the way because Kurama could only get so much chakra into out of you know the cage that he's locked in. So Naruto barely survives and we would then have the Sasuke and Itachi scene play out where he tells him that if he wants to look for him and claim vengeance one day then he needs to have these eyes as he would show him the Mangekyo Sharingan and Sasuke would basically just be like, huh, as you know, Itachi literally just basically hits him, knocking him out and then putting him in, in the uh, infinite Tsukiyomi or no, the Tsukiyomi as you know, obviously after this, we would essentially just have a uh, Naruto laying on the ground and a bunch of the village elders would arrive. Heroes in realizing that Naruto was in the crossfires, not telling Itachi to leave him alone as well, would rush over to Naruto as he would barely be able to save his life with a bunch of medical ninjas. Naruto would be out of commission for the next following um, two weeks because of this uh, this like attack that Itachi caused him. And Itachi would basically tell Haruzen to take care of Sasuke, with Haruzen actually telling Na Itachi that Naruto... He's alive. Itachi would have a little bit of a, a little bit of like happiness, just a tad slight bit. But when Naruto wakes up and remembers everything that happened, Naruto, Naruto's entire world would shatter before his eyes. Naruto's big brother figure had tried to kill him, and Naruto would just wonder to himself, why, why Itachi, why? After this, Naruto would simply close his eyes and rest, as Itachi would basically end up joining the Akatsuki, and Sasuke would be thinking that he lost everybody on that day. Now, when it comes to Sasuke, he's sad because he lost his family. His brother tried to kill him, his mother, his father, gone, cousins, family members, everything wiped away. Sasuke's left with nothing nothing at all and this is when about one week later would go by where naruto would arrive at the academy after sasuke arrives that same day and sasuke seeing naruto walk into the classroom would have mixed feelings he would be thinking that he's kind of glad that at least one other uchiha survived but another part of him would be wishing that naruto truly did die because as much as sasuke hated to admit it he hated naruto he hated him so much for always taking Itachi's time from him, for always having Fugaku prefer Naruto over himself, his own flesh and blood, Sasuke would have this hatred brewing within himself. And that is where we're going to be leaving off. What if Naruto was an Uchiha? All right, so before I actually pick off the story, there is one thing that I do have to say. Number one, the last part of the what if Naruto was an Uchiha had a couple of elements that I felt were forgotten and that I didn't mention. So I'm going to be mentioning them now and kind of redoing the little ending where uh, Itachi basically ended up, you know, putting Naruto on a t-shirt or so he thought by, you know, cutting open the man's chest. And so we're kind of going to be going into detail on that a little bit more. That being said, here is where we're going to be starting. 
So obviously, like I had stated on the last part, Naruto and Sasuke were both pretty much heading home. And when they were heading home, they ended up essentially walking into the Uchiha compound when they noticed the smell of blood. Immediately, Naruto basically used the body flicker jutsu to immediately arrive to his house, or the same house that Sasuke lives in, where he would essentially see Itachi standing over both of his adoptive parents. Now, Naruto being in this situation would immediately start hyperventilating, just literally looking at Itachi as Naruto was just like, Itachi, we have to find who did this as he would look at the sword in Itachi's hand and immediately it would re he would realize what happened. His Sharingan would go act his Sharingan would activate as Naruto would kind of just stand there in fear. He looked at, each at Itachi as a big brother feature, kind of like a father. That's what Itachi was to him. He Naruto aspired to be like Itachi. He changed his hair for Itachi. He even started dressing like him and come to find out that he's the one person who ended up destroying his family taking it away from him naruto would yell as he would say how dare you those were my parents he would rush at itachi with the kunai as itachi would smirk and say those were never your parents i've always hated you as Naruto's eyes would immediately turn to that of the Mangekyo Sharingan as they would begin bleeding and Itachi would slash at Naruto's chest. Immediately he would realize that you know Naruto's eyes turned to that of a Mangekyo. And many of you guys might be wondering, yo, when did Naruto get the Sharingan? Well, I said that Naruto was very skilled and uh, he's at around Itachi's level. So with that said, he ended up actually having the Sharingan. I'm not sure if I actually mentioned that on the previous part but even if i didn't i'm you know at least mentioning it now that being said though guys we're going to essentially just keep on going with that notion so obviously naruto would fall down onto the ground and this is when sasuke would rush on in there about two minutes later just being like big brother itachi we have to find whoever as he would see naruto on the ground and a side a sort of smile would appear on his face as he would just look at that and then be like naruto he would kind of just be like, we were finally starting to know each other. But another part of him would be so glad at the fact that Naruto was gone, but he would look at his family as he would realize that he lost everything. Sasuke would look at Itachi as he would be like, big brother, we have to try to save them. As Itachi would look at Sasuke and basically that entire scene would play out where he would cause Sasuke to see his parents death over and over and over. And he would end up actually unlocking the Sharingan. Because of the fact that this version of Sasuke is a little bit stronger than the original, I think that maybe he will be able to unlock it. However, not be able to access it once again until like he really, really needs it. So he unlocks it on this day, but isn't able to access it for the next couple of years. And since it's about one year and a half into the time that they've been into the academy, he's probably going to learn how to gain access to the one Tomoe by the end of the academy. That being said, though, Naruto would essentially be found by, you know, the Hokage and the Anbu and all that stuff a couple of, you know, minutes later after the Uchiha massacre. Itachi would report back to Hiruzen, who never ended up telling him to spare Naruto because the man is dumb and he forgot and so when uh itachi arrives there he basically tells him that everybody was wiped out hiruzen immediately blitzes over there trying to see if naruto can be found which he does naruto luckily survived because of the nine tails of chakra who was pumping out as much as he possibly could into naruto for naruto to be able to survive that being said, Naruto would basically be taken to the hospital where Naruto would essentially basically be clinging on to life with the help of a bunch of medical ninjas and the assistance of Kurama's chakra. Naruto would be passed out for the following week as the trauma would just be going on in his head and his body would heal after about four days but the mental trauma is just too much. And when Naruto finally wakes up, Hiruzen would be by his bedside seeing as he just came to check up on him. Naruto would open his eyes as they would be bleeding and Hiruzen would see the eyes, the Mangekyo Sharingan. Hiruzen seeing this would immediately just be like, Naruto, you, as Naruto would look at like, like legit just hold his hand over one of his eyes as he's like, was it real? And Hiruzen would look at Naruto as he would say, it was Naruto. Naruto would look at Hiruzen as he would say, we have to stop him. Itachi has to be killed for what he did to my family. As Hiruzen would tell Naruto that Itachi's gone. He fleed the village as a rogue ninja as of yet as of a, a week ago and Naruto would slam his hand on the bend as he would basically just be like I trusted him I did everything for him I trained for him I thought for a second that 
I was like a brother to him, but I guess I was nothing. He always hated me. Naruto would immediately grab a kunai by his bedside as he would cut his hair off and look at Hiruzen as Hiruzen would just look at Naruto and immediately Hiruzen would basically just look at him as he would tell him that that Mangekyo Sharingan has to be trained as essentially Hiruzen would end up asking Kakashi to be Naruto sensei meaning that uh, Naruto is going to be meeting Kakashi way earlier than he does in canon meaning that Naruto now is 100% going to be on team 7. Before he wasn't sure whether Naruto should be put on that or another team but seeing this he definitely needs to be put on team 7. That being said Kakashi would arrive in there about like 20 minutes later seeing as he was in the village and seeing Naruto sitting there he would just be thinking about how this is Minato's son and you know how he already has the Mangekyo something that not even his master was able to get during his lifetime and you know we basically just have Naruto looking at Kakashi as Hiruzen would explain to Kakashi that he wants him to train Naruto in how to use the Sharingan or more specifically the uh, excuse me the Mangekyo Sharingan Kakashi would immediately look at Naruto as he would say, So, Naruto, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Maybe your name, your likes, your dislikes. Naruto would look down as he would say, My likes are relaxing, eating ramen. My dislikes are Itachi. As Kakashi hearing that name would immediately just think back to his days in the Ambu with Itachi. And he would just see this look of like, Naruto wants to kill Itachi in his eyes. As Naruto would just look at Kakashi and say, when do we start training? And Kakashi would look at Naruto as he would simply just say tomorrow after your body rests a little longer. And so Naruto would look at Kakashi as he would say, all right. And he would basically force himself out of bed as he would essentially end up going to the Uchiha compound to which at this point, Naruto Sasuke is actually at the uh, academy, you know, just in there at this certain time and Naruto would essentially end up arriving to his house as he would grab all of his things and end up taking them away from there you know he would grab all of his essential things seeing as he's going to be going on a little bit of a training thing not only that but Kakashi ended up essentially deciding that you know he was kind of going to be training Naruto at his crib so Naruto would end up actually moving out of the Uchiha compound that same day to where Kakashi stays at Kakashi would give him an extra room that he has in the house that he used for training before and he would essentially just tell Naruto to make himself at home Naruto would put all of his stuff down as for the remainder of the time that Ka that uh Naruto and Sasuke would have been in the academy, Naruto would essentially use this entire time to be training with Kakashi on how to master his Mangekyo Sharingan. And since Naruto is actually going to be training on using it, that means Kakashi will as well. Meaning that by the end of all that time, Naruto will actually have access to the Susano. And his vision with the Mangekyo Sharingan would be like half gone. Because of the simple fact that, well, you know, no Sharingan, so it's like, you know, um, he tries not to use the Mangekyo as often as like he possibly can and the only training that he's really done with it is you know learning how to use the Susano. Now one thing that I am going to be asking you guys is what ability do you guys think that Naruto should have for his Mangekyo Sharingan? Please go down below in the comments right now as and you know basically just let me know what ideas you guys have as well as smash the like goal of the video which I will be telling you guys right now. The like goal for today's video is going to be one thousand likes as soon as you guys smash 1000 likes i'm gonna be dropping part two of what if not of part three sorry of what if naruto was in uchiha with um with the rest of the series no, no no not the rest of the series but you know another big chunk of the series that being said for the remainder of the time at the academy naruto would essentially just be going on on missions with kakashi and kind of train with him with his mangekyo meaning that kakashi would also be doing some training with his mangekyo as well and he would also learn how to use kamui a bit with himself even getting stronger because of the fact that he has naruto there who's already a pretty good prodigy in and of itself who's helping kakashi push himself even further that being said naruto even learns the secret of the clone jutsu way sooner than in canon so his training is sped up exponentially he even ends up learning the the uh the uh chidori sorry guys i had to go my dad was calling me but uh i'm back and like i said naruto ends up essentially learning the chidori that being said his training was exponentially sped up like a lot like a lot a lot a lot and naruto gets even stronger than what he already was let's say naruto was at around like uh itachi level almost by the time that you know he was like kid itachi level so not like 
not Itachi when he massacred the village level, but he was about half of that. And even that is extremely impressive because Sasuke was very, very weak. He's probably even stronger than the Sasuke that attempted to defeat Itachi when he just screamed at him and said, You die! Itachi! You know, when Itachi grabbed them and told them that his hatred still wasn't strong enough and all that stuff. So, yeah, Naruto definitely very, very powerful. That being said, as I said, Naruto would end up going on missions with Kakashi as well as training him for a year and a half. And during that time, he and Kakashi would actually end up getting a little bit close, leading Itachi or no Kakashi to actually adopt Naruto, essentially causing Sasuke to never actually end up seeing Naruto, thinking that Naruto truly died that day. A bunch of the Uchiha bodies were buried and, you know, Sasuke never blatantly saw Naruto's tombstone, but he just kind of assumed that he was dead as well. And Sasuke by this point has already kind of gotten over all that stuff he still has that hatred for itachi and he swears that someday he's gonna avenge his clan and kill everybody not only that but sasuke has like a sort of thing where he wants to get stronger than naruto was before so sasuke trains even harder than he would before because of the fact that he felt um he felt like he wasn't enough whenever he stood next to naruto and that's a feeling that sasuke never wanted to feel again no matter what because when naruto was in the academy he always overshadowed him but now that naruto's gone it's as if sasuke's now back to being the top dog and everybody likes him now so sasuke's a little happier than our normal canon's emo sasuke is thinking that now he has everything to himself and Naruto, Naruto actually ended up changing his haircut to something different, where his hair is way different than, you know, the Itachi Naruto on the thumbnail. That was just for like part one because of the fact that, you know, he loved Itachi. But after what happened, obviously, you're not going to love someone who try to kill you. So he changes his haircut and stops trying to dress like Itachi. Instead, he gets a haircut that like suits, uh, suits himself a little bit more. And I'm going to kind of try to look for an image of what haircut that would be, as well as, you know, the as well as Kakashi would essentially as well as he would dress something like Itachi way different than what he used to dress like where he used to wear like the the Ambu outfit looking thing. Now he dresses a lot different because he realized he doesn't want to be like the person who tried killing him. That being said, after all this time, the time would finally come when Naruto would essentially have to see Sasuke once again. Once the graduation day comes, Sasuke would of course end up passing and Iruka would end up giving out the exams, which Sasuke, of course, you know, being a prodigy or whatever, ends up acing. That being said, the Mizuki stuff does end up happening. However, I'm just going to be saying that some other ninja was able to see Mizuki and ended up stopping him. That being said, Naruto basically ended up, um, what's it called? Naruto ended up essentially just being next to uh, Kakashi as the next day is when they're all going to be meeting their Jonin senseis. Now Naruto being around Kakashi for so long kind of got into the habit of being late to things with Kakashi. So when they ended up having to meet them, they ended up being about three hours late to finally meet Team 7. Sasuke would be in there with Sakura kind of just like thinking of how he's going to get stronger once again, how he's going to make himself better than he was yesterday. And Sakura would be right next to him like, Sasuke! Oh my Sasuke, you know, just looking at him like, I can't believe we're on the same team and it's just us two. It's going to be great. As you know, Ino was jealous of that because, you know, she gets to be around Sasuke all the time. But, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? And, you know, they were thinking it was just going to be a two man team. But Iruka or no, but this one out of nowhere, Kakashi would walk into the door as we would then see a Naruto come come right behind him as sasuke the second that his eyes lock onto those blue eyes that naruto has would immediately be like what are you doing here as naruto would look at sasuke and have a smile on his face thinking that he's finally gonna get to see sasuke again but the reaction that sasuke gave him was something naruto didn't expect sasuke would get a little enraged and say that he's str even stronger than naruto ever was now and Naruto would just look at Sasuke thinking, what are you talking about? You know, you finally see me after a year and a half and this is the reaction I get. Kind of expected a little bit more considering we're brothers and all. But which Sasuke would look at Naruto and say, we're not brothers. We never were. You always overshadowed me, but not anymore, Naruto. I trained even harder than you did and I promise you. Now I'm even stronger than I ever was before. As Sasuke would get enraged and, you know, he would look at Naruto as he would activate his Sharingan 
with the one Tomoe on, and Kakashi would just look at Sasuke as he's like, oh, okay, as he would tell Team 7 and basically meet him on the roof. This is when he would tell them to basically give out their little stories about, you know, what they want to do. Sasuke would say his goal is to kill Itachi and destroy a certain someone. And, you know, Sakura would say, um, um, I want to be a good wife, you know, just normal Sakura stuff. But this is when Naruto would essentially just be looking at Sasuke, but looking down at the same time because he feels as if Sasuke doesn't like him. Now, Naruto obviously, obviously still hasn't had it like go through his head still that Sasuke hates him or is jealous of him because he never saw it that way. But, you know, he would kind of just be looking down as Sasuke would leave begrudgingly, going to the Uchiha compound, going to where Naruto used to live at and destroying the room with a fireball jutsu. That being said, the very next day they would end up meeting at the tree where Naruto and Kakashi would arrive very, very late. And Naruto would end up just standing right in front of Kakashi as Sasuke would walk up to Naruto and he would say, let's fight Naruto. As Naruto would look at Sasuke and just be like, I mean, right now? As Sasuke would end up throwing a kick, but before Naruto, but before Naruto even put his guard up, Kakashi would grab Sasuke's leg as he would block it with his forearm and be like, well, if you want to fight Naruto so bad, I guess we can have some changes to the team. Originally, I was going to have Naruto be with you guys trying to take these bells, but since you want to fight him so bad, how about here's the new test. Both of you have to fight against Naruto and steal one bell. Whoever fails is going to be returning back to the academy. Sasuke hearing this would immediately not even get like not even listen to them say start as he would rush at Naruto and he would basically begin to throw a bunch of kicks to which Naruto would simply do a bunch of backflips to avoid. Now Sasuke would basically look at him as he would say stop running away you coward as he would shoot a fire style fireball jutsu right at Naruto's direction. But Naruto would create a shadow clone as he would grab himself by the arms and throw himself into the air. Sasuke seeing this would get angry but he would jump up into the air so he would say now as Naruto's shadow clone was actually able to use the substitution jutsu and appear behind Sasuke as he would basically kick him away right in his back causing Sasuke to like go forward and fall to the ground. Sakura would just see this and be like hey as she would run up to Naruto and go to try to throw a punch but Naruto would grab it with one hand and begin to crush her fist. As Sakura would fall down onto one knee Sasuke seeing this would rush at the Naruto which was in the air and say you're not doing this again as he would throw a Phoenix fire style jutsu right at Naruto but Naruto would create hand signs for water style and he would shoot it right at Nar uh, Sasuke's you know little fire phoenix jutsu as it would basically cancel it out and Naruto would then look at Sasuke as he would take out a sword that he has on his back which he was actually gifted by Shisui as he would then begin to rush at uh, Sasuke and you know seeing that sword that Sasuke has seen so many times by Shisui would enrage him as he would activate his Sharingan and Naruto would do that as well his three Tomoe's would stare right at you know Sasuke's two uh, no, two and one, as, you know, he basically rushes at Sasuke, and Sasuke just has that feeling of being, like, completely at a loss when it comes to fighting Naruto. The way that he sees him is that Naruto is standing on this gigantic mountain that he will never be able to climb, and he's just so far ahead of himself that Sasuke will never be able to reach a level that high. And so, Sasuke rushes at him and gets angry, and he's like, DIE! As he just throws, like, a kunai's at him, and Naruto would jump over them as he would basically body flicker behind him and tap Sasuke's head with the back of the, with the back of a, with the handle of the sword, causing Sasuke to get knocked out. This is when Sasuke would wake up a couple of minutes later as both he and Sakura would be tied to the tree stump. Now Naruto being who he is would have asked Kakashi for them to have one more chance. And through this, he would basically end up essentially, um, end up giving them a, a second chance however this time naruto would give them the hint that you know they kind of need to work together sasuke would look at naruto with an angry expression as he would look down and be kind of sad at the same time not saying a word to naruto just feeling like completely useless in the face of naruto as you know he would not say a word and you know he would finally look at sakura as he would say the next time we do this we're gonna use teamwork as they would proceed to try to take the bells from Naruto, but not be able to, however, they would use teamwork. And Kakashi seeing this would end up passing them, not knowing that Naruto actually gave them the hint to pass. Because had he not done that, Sasuke would have continued to be selfish and they would have lost. 
And so they end up going on annoying missions for about one week with Naruto kind of not talking to Sasuke and Kakashi noticing that there's some tension. He would ask Naruto what the problem is as Naruto would just look at him and say, I, I don't know, ever since we were kids, Sasuke never liked me. I never understood it. I always looked at him like a brother, but Sasuke just never acknowledged me. No matter what I did, how strong I got, he never praised me once, and although I always was there to tell him that he did a good job, that he was great, that he was amazing, and you know, reminding others of how great he was, he was never there for me. What about me? As Kakashi would look at him and say, I don't think Sasuke necessarily dislikes you, but time will tell. As you know, obviously they would continue going on missions, to which Naruto would say that this is a waste of time, and he would end up basically asking for a stronger mission, to which they would be giving the Seam Rake mission, and it would of course be the Land of the Waves mission. That being said, this is when they would end up meeting Tazuna, who would walk into the room in a very drunken state, just being like, oh, what's going on? Like, this is the team you expect to defend me. And, you know, they would kind of just look at Tazuna as they're just like, this guy is clearly drunk. Here's them would have Anbu members take him out of the room as Naruto and everybody on the team would just meet up at the, at the village gate the next day. This is when they would continue their travels as about 30 minutes into it, they would notice a puddle on the ground. Naruto immediately noticing this would break the genjutsu as he would rush at the demon brothers who would be taken out very very easily they would pretty much be interrogated and afterwards naruto would grab his sword as he would slash at both of the brothers throats and he would then seal them inside of scrolls to which sakura and sasuke would see this and immediately just be like he's on another level like Sasuke seeing this would realize that Naruto's killed already who knows how many people he's killed and naruto would turn towards sasuke as he would say let's go he would just say that as they would continue walking and about two hours into it naruto would throw kunai at a white rabbit as he would see what he did sasuke would laugh at naruto saying that like he really got on guard for just a rabbit as kakashi would put his hand up and then say wait and this is when he would hear something as kakashi would say everybody down naruto would duck Sasuke would do as well and Sakura would as Zabuza would appear on the blade and immediately Kakashi would look at Naruto as he would say let's go he would immediately reveal his three Tomoe Sharingan as Naruto would as well and they would rush at Zabuza and Zabuza would immediately see two ninjas coming at him he would create a clone jutsu to pretty, pretty much uh try to handle Naruto but Naruto would kick the clone as he would then throw a kunai straight at Zabuza's clone's eye causing it to pop as Naruto would then rush at Zabuza who was come who was completely getting pressed by Kakashi at this point, who was on the defensive, Naruto would create a couple of hand signs as he would say, Chidori, as a lightning blade would appear on his hand, and from out of nowhere, some Senbon would be thrown right in front of Naruto, causing Naruto not to stab the Chidori, and then turn towards Haku, who ended up rushing in there, and, you know, basically aiding Zabuza with the fight. As he would immediately begin to rush at Naruto, Naruto seeing this would just be like, what? As, you know, obviously he ends up basically jumping back and Haku would immediately basically create the crystal ice mirror jutsu. Haku creating this would then begin to throw a bunch of senbon at Naruto to which Naruto would be able to dodge a good majority of them but one out of a hundred always hits him. Naruto would get pretty angry at this as he would des decide that he needs to bust out that as Naruto would awaken his Mangekyo Sharingan and Sasuke wouldn't be able to notice this because he's just simply on the sidelines uh, you know trying to defend Tazuna but this is when uh what color should Naruto's Susano be let's see mm, I don't know guys comment that down below in the comments what color should Naruto Susano be actually should no I don't want it to be purple because that's the color that no his is let's see what color should it be let's go with uh, I, I I honestly can't think of a cool color for Naruto Susano. So you guys, please comment it down below what color you guys want it to be. Naruto Susano would basically bust out as it would be the 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 one with the rib cage. Or no 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 no, not the rib cage, but the steed with the stage two stages after that. As Naruto would basically create a sword with the Susano stuff, and he would cut the ice crystal mirrors causing Haku to get busted out of them. Immediately, Naruto would create the hand signs for a um for a shadow clone as a bunch of shadow clones would begin to rush at Haku. Now Haku would slowly start getting overwhelmed as Naruto would use a headhunter's jutsu, causing Haku to get everything except for her his her head, his head, sorry, into the ground as Naruto would then basically create a Chidori as he would begin to rush at him and drag the Chidori in the ground as he does this. As he would cut 
Haku's head right off and Haku's head would just like roll as we would then basically see Zabuza get pretty angry at this he would say my tool he would rush at Kakashi but Kakashi would immediately say checkmate as he would create a water dragon jutsu which would completely engulf Zabuza knocking him out to which afterwards Naruto would walk over to Zabuza and before you know, Kakashi got to say anything he would stab his blade right into Zabuza's skull as he would remove it and then say let's continue with a mission. Now Kakashi seeing this would see a look of anger in Naruto's eyes and he would question what happened. Naruto would just say that he's having some troubles that only he can deal with. As Kakashi would impress any more seeing as you know he understands that Naruto will eventually talk to him but if he tries to push Naruto then he's not going to be getting anywhere with him. He's a kid you know. Even though Naruto is powerful he's still just like 12 years old 13 you know what I mean. So it's not like you're going to get all the answers in the world from him. And so they would essentially go on to continue the Land of Waves mission to which Naruto would basically be in charge of trying to show Sakura how to get stronger as a ninja. Seeing as Sasuke didn't want to comply at all to anything that Naruto tried to teach him because he just had so much hatred and jealousy for him. So Kakashi ended up having to teach him how to water walk, tree walk, and all that basic stuff. When it comes to Sakura, she ended up learning that stuff very easily and ended up getting pretty good at Taijutsu prowess as well as some Genjutsu, seeing as Naruto ended up teaching her some of that. That being said though, we would essentially have them finish up the bridge and by the time that they do, Gato's men would finally arrive. This is when essentially Gato's men would basically end up saying that, you know, this bridge cannot be finished. As you know, they would try to destroy it, however, as they do that, Sasuke seeing this would say that Naruto's not going to get all the credit, as he would rush at Gato's men and be absolutely ruthless. After he kills the first person, he finally gets used to that feeling, and he would rush at the rest of them as he would just take out all his anger to Naruto on all of these men, obliterating everybody except for Gato, because Gato, Gato's death would have been prevented by Naruto, who blocked it with his sword, and he would grab Gato as he would give him to the villagers for them to do whatever they wanted to do to Gato. After this, Sasuke would simply just go, huh, as Naruto would just be like, that was a little reckless, but you know, you did the job. As all of them would of course just give, be given their thanks, and they would end up returning back to the Leaf Village. This is where Naruto would basically just end up bumping into, you know, Kanahamaru. Kanahamaru would end up basically not really knowing Naruto, and so the interaction with the Sand Village would not happen because, Kon uh, you know, Kanahamaru wouldn't run away from Naruto. And so we would basically just have, um, them all be told by Kakashi about the Chunin exams, saying that Naruto is actually not going to be participating. So if they're ready, then they can take it with both of them on the team just themselves. Naruto would be explained that he's already a Chunin because of the fact that, you know, uh, Hiruzen already felt that he was more than powerful. And truth be told, Naruto is at least high Jonin level when it comes to his strength. Sasuke and Sakura hearing this would immediately be told that sure they want to as you know they would end up getting ambushed by their by those little Chunin instructors who end up pretty much testing to see whether they're truly ready for the Chunin exams and so we would basically just have them go to the Chunin exams location where the Genjutsu would be placed and Sasuke and Sakura would both be able to dispel it. Shortly after, Rock Lee would appear challenging Sasuke, leading to almost the same encounter as in canon. Except Naruto isn't there to basically say how, what about me, what about me, you know what I mean? Naruto isn't going to be there. So Sasuke would end up actually getting whooped by Rock Lee. And Rock Lee would kind of just think that, you know, Sasuke definitely was pretty powerful, but he could have had way more to offer. However, Rock Lee did have to take his weights off just to be able to whoop him comfortably. And he basically was stopped by Mike Guy during the battle. And so Sasuke getting defeated by not only Naruto every time that he's ever tried to face him, but also, you know, Lee would kind of just get angry, like super, 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 super angry. As at this point, Sasuke would kind of just be bloodthirsty for power. Like he wants power so bad, not only to defeat Itachi, but he almost wants it just as bad to kill Naruto or to at least put him in his place, thinking that he's the true blood son of Fugaku, he's the real brother of Itachi. You know, if anybody's gonna kill Itachi, it's gonna be him. And Naruto would kind of just be at, at, with Kakashi, just kind of chilling, not really thinking about what Sasuke gonna be doing during these exams. But ooh, if he should have been, because during the exams, they would of course take the written part, and Sasuke would use the Sharingan to essentially copy people's pencil movements. 
And so Sakura would end up passing because she actually knows what she's doing. However, when it comes to once they have to go into the forest, all the Anko stuff would end up going just like it does in canon. However, the only real change that's going to be happening is that once they end up getting into the forest, when they get approached by Orochimaru, this encounter would go way different than it does in canon. See, this version of Sasuke is so power hungry that he does not care what he has to do in order to achieve that power. And so the second that Orochimaru offers Sasuke a way for him to get power, he would willingly let himself get bit by the curse mark as well as be pretty much taken by Orochimaru. Meaning that Sasuke willingly is like leaving the village. However, before he leaves, he would even kill Sakura for her silence. Here's how the thing would go down. They would end up arriving into the forest as Sasuke would look towards Sakura and be like, you ready? Sakura would be like, uh, yeah, Sasuke. As she'd be like, with you, I'm ready for anything. Sasuke would be like, good, don't hold me back. As Sakura would just look down at the ground, but she would continue running on top of trees. So now, ah, Sasuke would basically end up, you know, continuing to go through the forest as, you know, Sakura would just be tailing behind him until a random ninja would appear, the random snake lady, and, you know, she would kind of end up fighting against Sakura and Sasuke, which with Sasuke being cocky, thinking that he could take her, but shortly realizing that she can't, that he can't, as Orochimaru basically ends up revealing himself and who he is. Sasuke hearing this would, hearing that, you know, Orochimaru has power to offer him, would immediately just be like, and how would I go by attaining this power? What would I need to do? Orochimaru would immediately just have a big bright smile on his face just thinking that this is too perfect. There's nobody here to stop me from taking Sasuke. As he would immediately look towards Sasuke and say, kill the pink haired one. I need to be sure that your alliance is real. As Sasuke without a second thought, simply thinking about power, would turn towards, uh, would turn towards um, Sakura as he would say, I have to make this sacrifice. It's nothing personal. He would immediately create a couple of uh, hand signs as he would say, Phoenix style, fire Phoenix Jutsu, as you know, he would just shoot a gigantic Phoenix right at Sakura and it would engulf her, causing her entire body to be con like engulfed by flames. Sakura would fall down to the ground and she would die as Sasuke would basically end up looking at Orochimaru as he would say, when do we get started? Orochimaru would proceed to tell Sasuke to follow him as they would leave the village. After Sasuke basically ends up leaving the village with Orochimaru, we have, well, everybody not really realizing what just happened, right? Nobody really is, you know, under the impression of anything happening because nobody ends up running into Team 7's body or Sakura's body until about three days would go by and Naruto would kind of realize that his team still hasn't came back. Where are Sakura and Sasuke? Kakashi would tell Naruto that it, it'd, it'd be fine to go look for them. Maybe they got caught up in a battle, maybe they're injured or something, and Naruto would just be thinking that, yeah, that's probably it, but seeing as Sasuke's with them, they're probably fine. Naruto would end up going into the into the forest, as he would see a couple of teens, but end up saying that he's a Jonin, you know, they don't need to mess with him or worry, as those little teams would basically go by Naruto, and, you know, Naruto, after a couple of minutes of searching around for Team 7, would end up finding Sakura. Now, she would be laying down on the ground as Naruto would land right beside her and like turn her body over as he would see that her throat is covered in blood and it had a gash right through it. As Naruto sees this, he would fear for what happened to Sasuke. Naruto wouldn't even examine what just happened as he would just be thinking the worst. He would begin to search around for Sasuke but find nothing as he would report back to Kakashi and say that Sakura is dead. This is when Naruto would basically end up thinking what could have happened as you know thinking that they probably lost in the tuning exams wondering who it was that did that naruto would be angry but kakashi would tell naruto that the killing was allowed and that if sasuke did die in the tuning exams then there's nothing he could do about it legally it's allowed they signed the contract sasuke knew what he was getting himself into However, this is when a, a little, uh, you know, Chunin would come in running saying that it's Orochimaru. He ended up making his way into the exams. And Anko would be in that same room. So after Naruto hears the name Orochimaru, Kakashi hears this as well. Naruto would look at Kakashi as Kakashi would nod his head, no, don't do it. And Naruto would immediately blitz, like, he would pretty much blitz back just thinking that there's no way. Like, Orochimaru must have taken him by force. 
as Naruto would rush, like, trying to find Orochimaru, because that's probably the reason, he would then end up running into the sound team, as, you know, when he sees them, they basically are talking about Lord Orochimaru, and Naruto, hearing this conversation, would basically end up asking them what happened. After defeating the two strongest members, the girl would fold under pressure, as she would pretty much tell Naruto everything. Naruto, being in a state of rage, would end up killing all, all four of the, or is it the sound three? The sound four? I don't know. He would kill the three yeah it's three ninjas right yeah he would kill the three ninjas as he would basically go back to kakashi this is when naruto would basically look at Haruzen as he would basically use the body flicker to go into lord third's office as he would go up to him and tell him that sasuke is missing from the village lord orochimaru must have taken him as Haruzen would basically look at naruto and say that he can't go searching for him right now they're they're having the tuning exams take place right now you know they can't be lacking their strongest ninjas just in case anybody gets any ideas and naruto would say that he's not coming back until he finds sasuke as kakashi would enter the room and say sasuke left by force naruto would look at him as he would say that's not true sasuke would never do that i know him as kakashi would basically show him the kunai that sakura was killed with Naruto seeing this kunai would immediately realize that he didn't even think to examine Sakura's body. He simply began to go frantic and search for Sasuke. Naruto would realize that he folded under pressure. And he would then look at Kakashi as Kakashi would tell him, Sasuke's gone Naruto. He left by his own choice. Naruto hearing this would just have his world just kind of break down before him. As Naruto would turn towards Kakashi and say that's... That's not true, Kakashi Sensei. That's that's not true, right? He would look down at the ground as he would have realized that that had to be it. Sasuke's body wasn't found. Orochimaru was gone, and from what the sound the sound genin were telling him, that's exactly what happened. Naruto would bang his hand on Hiruzen's table as he would say, "What is the meaning of this? Why would Sasuke leave?" As, you know, he would just be beating himself up at the fact that he didn't even check on the kunai. Had he done that, he might have been able to catch up to Orochimaru. It's been three days, but using his full speed, he may have been able to catch up. And Naruto would then realize that Sasuke's far gone. He, he killed Sakura, left the village. Naruto's eyes would widen as he would kind of just come to a realization that he's going to have to take care of Sasuke as well as Itachi. He's going to have to get rid of the entirety of the Uchiha clan. Nobody's going to be left. Nobody at all. What will he do? Naruto decides that the only thing he can do is just simply wait for Sasuke to return to the village. Or wait for the battle between Sasuke and Itachi to happen. This is when Naruto would decide that for the moment, he's simply going to wait patiently. And since he doesn't even have a team anymore, he would end up being told by Haruzen that since that's the case, he's going to be assigned to the Anbu as one of his personal Anbu. Naruto would accept this as well as Kakashi would as well because, you know, he doesn't have a team anymore, so he might as well just go back to it. And this time, he's going to be part of Hiruzen's Anbu. So we would essentially just have Naruto and Kakashi going into the Anbu for about one week. They would go on one mission where Naruto's kind of off of his game because of the simple fact that he just lost Sasuke, one of the last Uchiha remaining survivors. How's the clan going to come back? But Naruto just kind of puts that to the back of his mind, completes the mission, and when he returns back to the village, he would actually end up running into a very, very cool sight. Now, what he would basically come into is Itachi and Kisame versus Kuranai, Asuma, and uh, I, I think that was it, actually. Yeah, Kurama and Asuma. As well as... Uh, no, yeah, that was that was literally the only people that were there, right? They're basically trying to fight off against Itachi. Now, um, what's it called? Kurunai tries to put Itachi in a Genjutsu, and he would laugh as he ends up putting her in one. And, you know, we would then basically have um, Naruto and Kakashi arriving there as they would see that, you know, Itachi and Kisame are in the village. Naruto, upon impact, would rush at Itachi with, like, his mind just being clouded with bad thoughts, you know what I mean? Itachi would basically not get hit by Naruto, as he's able to easily, you know, read Naruto's movements and dodge out of the way. Naruto basically just misses the punch, as he would throw a kick to which Itachi would dodge with one arm, as he would just push Naruto away, and Kisame would smile, as my guy would finally arrive on the scene naruto would tell kakashi to handle the other akatsuki member that he has itachi 
as Kakashi would, you know, trusting Naruto would say, right, as he would look at Mike Guy and basically tell him, come on, Guy, we have to take this one out, as Mike Guy would just say, all right, Kakashi, you know, my rival, whoever takes him down first has to buy food for the other per whoever loses is to buy food for the other, as Kakashi just kind of smiles, thinking that even under pressure, Mike Guy is still such a great guy, and Kakashi would then rush at Kisame as they would both begin to try to fight against him. This is when we're going to be covering this battle first. Actually, no. First, we're going to have something happen with Naruto for the battles to be split up. Naruto seeing Itachi and just being clouded by more and more rage would just turn towards Itachi as Itachi would ask him a question. Where is Sasuke? As Naruto would just look at Itachi and say, I don't know. And, you know, eventually Naruto's eyes would go to a red state. Like, his eyes would start glowing red. The influence of the Nine Tails is coming in. As Itachi seeing this would simply think that he's he's getting pretty angry. It's going to be easy to win the battle. Until Naruto would just say, I'm, ha I'm tired of this. I'm going to end this now. His eyes would shift to that of the Mangekyo Sharingan as Itachi's eyes widen. And Naruto immediately reveals the Susano. The Susano would basically show up as Naruto would using the sword would smack Itachi far. Like he would hit Itachi. Causing Itachi to get blown back like very very far. Now Itachi being the Chad that he is would throw a bunch of kunais with like metal strings at like two trees and he would catch himself with the string basically swinging himself up onto a tree. This is where Itachi would basically begin to go back over to like an open field area with Naruto as Naruto would land and you would just see one two tails actually going off of Naruto with Naruto, you know, having the animalistic features. Itachi would ask Naruto, what did he mean he's gone? No, Itachi would basically ask Naruto as he would be like, where's my brother? I, I think I already said that, but I'm not too sure. As you know, Naruto just basically ends up saying that he left. He left the village just like you did, you coward. As he would turn towards Itachi and begin to rush at him. Itachi seeing that, you know, this is kind of going to be a do or die moment, activates his Susanoo. As we will now be switching over to our perspective with the battle against my guy, Kakashi against Kisame. See, at first, Kisame would have the upper hand seeing as my guy and Kakashi aren't exactly like using their full power. Uh, Kakashi has his three Tomoe Sharingan active just so he can dodge a couple of the attacks and my guy has about the third to fourth gate open. They're both fighting against Kisame as he would just basically be taunting them telling them that this is the best the Leaf Village has to offer as he would just begin to pretty much start siphoning chakra away from my guy. Kakashi would come in with a kick as Kisame would get blown back and you know Kakashi would basically see as my guy would just say Kakashi cover me. As you know, Kakashi would rush at Kisame, throwing a barrage of taijutsu, you know, just hits. As at this point, my guy would basically just say, Sixth gate, open! As the sixth gate would open, and Kakashi realizing that it's now time to get serious, would basically, you know, reveal the Mangekyo Sharingan. He would switch the pattern, as he would then basically start being able to keep up with my guy in terms of reaction time, not speed or strength. Kakashi would start throwing blows at Kisame, who's barely able to dodge and isn't even able to use uh, Samehara at this point. Guy would be able to kick Samehara out of his hands as he would basically kick Kisame right into Kakashi, and Kakashi would use a bunch of you know hand signs as he would say Water Dragon Jutsu. He would shoot a gigantic Water Dragon at Kisame as he would substitute out of there right near his sword, and he would basically grab it as he was essentially fused into the sword, doing that transformation where he turns into a shark-like state. This is when the tide, the tide of the battle would slightly begin to change as Kisame would start getting the upper hand on Kakashi and my guy. My guy would slowly start saying that they're going to be needing more firepower as my guy would simply say seventh gate open and he would rush towards Kisame as he would throw a kick and he would then basically begin to kick Kisame over to Kakashi as Kakashi would say Chidori, as he would stab a Chidori to the back of Kisame's chest, which Kisame would hold his chest like as he didn't hit any, any like he didn't hit his heart, but it definitely hit like a lung, you know what I mean? And Kisame would cough out blood, as Kakashi would then turn towards Kisame, who then immediately tries to substitute out of there, but Itachi was, um, no, Kakashi, sorry. Kakashi was too fast, and he would use Kamui to basically snipe Kisame's head off. Kisame's body 
would fall to the ground as he would basically end up just kind of looking at Kisame as his body would essentially defuse with Samehara and the sword would just be sitting there on the ground. This is when we switch perspectives over to Naruto. Itachi would basically end up activating his Susanoo as he looks at Naruto and says that this battle is going to be needing to come to a close early. Naruto and Itachi Susanoo's would both clash as Itachi would basically hit Naruto with the Totsuka Blade as Naruto Susanoo would basically be taken by Itachi like he would have absorbed the entirety of the Susanoo and Naruto was barely able to jump out of it by substituting out of there which you know after Itachi takes away the, the Susanoo Naruto basically just ends up deciding that he should have dodged that as he would reactivate the Susano, and it would actually drain a lot of his power, as Naruto would end up revealing one ability that he has. And this ability is to be able to see into the future by 5 seconds. This is his Mangekyo abilities. Now many of you guys are probably wondering what color Naruto Susano is, and for this I'm basically going to be saying that his Susano is like a, uh, is like, ah. Uh, it's, it's kind of like the color of the nine tails chakra yeah it's kind of like that color no 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 because no. then it would look too similar to itachi's mm, let's see it's gold no i don't want it to be gold all right look it's purple all right it's purple no it's blue like his eyes it's the color of his eyes right and his ability is basically to be able to see into the future by five seconds, go back by six times, and freeze people in time for two seconds. So what Naruto would do is reactivate a Susano, and as Itachi basically goes to try to poke him with the Totsuka Blade, Naruto would dodge as he would essentially take out like his um, his scythe because that's the tool that Naruto has. He would go and slash at Itachi Susano, which would actually be blocked by the Yadamir. And this is when Naruto would realize that the Susano is probably not going to be his best bet against Itachi. Naruto would deactivate the Susano as he would dodge the giant attacks of the Totsuka Blade, and seeing as the protection of the Yadamir is an omnidirectional, what Naruto does is basically place both of his hands onto the ground as he would use an Earth Jutsu to basically begin to break the ground below Itachi. As Itachi loses his balance, Naruto would create a clone as he uses the Headhunter Jutsu to grab Itachi and shove him into the ground, and this is when Naruto would have Itachi there. But this would actually be a Genjutsu placed by Itachi. He was never taken into the ground. He was narrowly able to escape. And Naruto would notice this. He's not dumb. After this, Itachi would proceed to activate the Susanoo once more as he would smack Naruto away. And Naruto's anger would just begin to rise and rise even more as he would simply begin to walk at Itachi as he paused time for two seconds and then proceeds to essentially blitz at Itachi as he pierces the Susanoo with nothing but a Chidori. He pierces that entire thing and then pierces into Itachi's stomach. As at this point, he basically ends up just kind of destroying this man. As Naruto would look at Itachi and say, I want the truth, Itachi. Why did you kill everybody on that night? Itachi would look at Naruto as he would essentially say, I did it to test my power. As Naruto would simply look at Itachi and get angered as he would ask him why it is that he did what he why did he kill him you know he thought he was like a brother to him and itachi would tell him the truth telling him that the only reason he ever was with him was because his father fugaku asked him to train him the only reason that anybody ever gave him any special treatments was because he had the nine tails within him had it not been for that he would have been treated even worse than sasuke maybe never even adopted by the uchiha family he wishes that would have never happened because maybe then he would have had the chance to be with his brother Sasuke. As Naruto hearing this would just be shocked, eyes widened, and Itachi would look at Naruto as he would activate the Amaterasu, burning Naruto in those flames, killing him. But Naruto would rewind time and basically stab a Chidori right into, into Itachi's head as Itachi would die right there and Naruto would simply just say, he'll never let his guard down again as he would essentially proceed to look and just look towards the area where you know my guy and kakashi were fighting and he would run over there seeing that they ended up handling the threat at this point sasuke would still be training with orochimaru and barely hasn't even really gotten anything done naruto would grab itachi's eyes as he would put them in a container of like water or whatever it is that they use as he his eyes his vision is already getting blurry 
So he basically ends up getting the surgery to basically change his eyes from those of his own to that of a different Uchiha members. And we're just going to say that I don't really know if this would really work because I'm pretty sure that you have to be family. But um, uh, we're just going to say that it works just this one time because if we don't, Naruto's going to get blinded and that's pretty much going to be where the story ends. He wouldn't be able to take out the Akatsuki if he's blind, you know what I mean? So we're just going to say that it works and he ends up getting the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. After this, Naruto would kind of fall into like a sort of depression state, like just angry and he would get a darker tone to himself, realizing that half of his life was simply a lie. But Kakashi would try to be there for Naruto, but Naruto would simply just be battling some demons within himself, you know what I mean? And so, during doing more and more missions as an Anbu member would just kind of help Naruto cope with things. He would kill a bunch of ninjas, and be way more ruthless than he would normally be had this not have been what ended up taking place. And it's at this point that the Akatsuki would essentially get word of what happened. Apparently, Naruto was able to take out, let's say, Kisame and Itachi. The Akatsuki realizing that Naruto is becoming more and more of a threat as the days go by would end up deciding that what they're going to be doing is taking out Naruto before Naruto gets any stronger. So they're going to be ambushing the village way sooner than they did in canon with all of the Akatsuki members, you know? And so we would essentially just have it to where Naruto is just going to be like not having a good time, you know what I mean? Like Naruto is not, he's not feeling good, you know? He still has some anger pent up within himself. And this is when the Akatsuki would essentially arrive at the village. Pain would float above it as he would use the almighty push to destroy literally over 90% of the village. As Naruto would just kind of have been in his house when like everything was blown away. And Naruto had to use the Susanoo to block the, the, the blow, you know what I mean? Like that's how he ended up surviving. This is when he would basically look towards the sky as he would see like this this pain guy up in the air. Naruto realizing this would basically use his ability to rewind time as he would essentially rewind time by how, what, what did I say the limit was? I said he could rewind by six seconds. He would do this as you know he would rewind it to before you know he pain even had the chance to destroy the village. As Naruto would just look up, up into the air, as he would basically just use a, um, what attack would be good for dealing with the diva path very, very quickly? What attack does Naruto have? Naruto would, hmm, Naruto would shoot a fireball jutsu right into the air of pain, as pain seeing this attack would simply go to, go to dodge it. But during that time that he, he, he basically took to dodge, Naruto would jump into the air almost as high as Pain is by using a bunch of clones to essentially just throw him up there, you know what I mean? And then Naruto would literally activate the Susano mid-air as he would use a blade and he would go to cut Pain. However, he would use the almighty push and he would push Naruto away pretty far, causing Naruto to land on the ground. This is when the rest of the Akatsuki members would land on the ground with the exception of Kisame and Itachi as all of them would just kind of smile and Naruto seeing this would kind of just be like, how am I going to handle this like this is so many powerful ninjas coming to attack me at once you know what i mean naruto realizing that he's going to be definitely needing help would then rush at the weakest member that he could see and the weakest one that he could tell was hidan so naruto would rush at hidan and in an instant naruto would use shisui's blade to essentially cut uh cut hidan's head right off as at this point naruto would use a chidori to basically like destroy hidan's head essentially killing him since you know he's immortal but you can't exactly fix a destroyed head you know what i mean so hidan kind of dead you know what i mean he dies of hunger after that and when it comes to Kakashi and like Mike Guy, they basically end up arriving on the scene with Kakashi immediately activating the Mangekyo Sharingan and Mike Guy going into the eighth gates because he realizes that if he does not use that off rip for all of these ninjas, he's gonna die. So Mike Guy would have a flashback to when his father, um, uh, Sky, well, I forgot, uh, Might might die I, I i don't i don't know but his father you know basically whatever his name was when he used that ability to fight against the legendary seven swordsmen you know what i mean and after this point we would just have the three-man squad versus the akatsuki
Now, the person that Naruto would have the hardest time with would be somebody with an orange mask. To, but Naruto would basically continue getting attacked by every single direction. My guy would end up handling, let's see, who would who would a good person for my guy be? We're going to say he don't, no, 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 uh, Kakazu. And, and um, Kakashi would end up basically handling Deidara by sniping him out of existence in the air. Basically taking him into the Kamui dimension. But Obito being in the Kamui dimension would essentially take, uh, you know, what's it called, Deidara out. And Kakashi would almost die because he almost got caught off guard. However, this is when Naruto would basically like blitz over there as he would stop Deidara before he can even like move, stopping him in place for two seconds. As Naruto would essentially use a Chidori to blast straight into, you know, Deidara's body, killing him. As at this point, my guy would have already handled Kakuzu in all of his extra lives, as he would rush at Sasori, who would actually end up injecting him with some poison, but my guy, knowing that he's gonna die either way, would just continue battling through the pain, as he would eventually end up destroying Sasori's puppets. And this is when we would just have like like more of the strong people left, you know what I mean? We have people like Pain and um obito this is when my guy and kakashi would handle all of the paths of pain as in the original i think kakashi was almost able to handle the diva path i'm pretty sure it was and so he would fight him and naruto would be over there rushing at obito as obito would just continue using his kamui ability and naruto would not be able to hit him so what naruto would do is just kind of get angrier and angrier as at one point naruto would have all four tails basically arrive as naruto would undergo a transformation and with this anger obito would kind of just begin to like hit naruto around because naruto doesn't have any sense of self and naruto is completely engulfed in the nine tails hate so Naruto would begin losing against Obito and Naruto would like barely be able to calm himself out of the stage by like sheer willpower as he goes into like a calmer state of mind and Obito would just blitz over at Kakashi saying that he believes that's his as he would yank Kakashi's eye out of his head and Naruto seeing this would kind of just get angered like angry beyond belief as he just saw like basically his father figure the only person who was ever there for him just get his eye ripped off and for like immediately after this obito proceeded to stab like his chains into kakashi's head as you know he basically kamui'd out of there with kakashi as he wrapped his chains around kakashi and kamui'd out of there he would then proceed to fight against kakashi inside of the kamui dimension as kakashi gets killed Obito is never revealed who he is, except in his final moments, as he shows Kakashi who he was, and he ends up basically decapitating Kakashi, telling him that the Kakashi who could not protect Rin is not the real Kakashi, but an imposter. As he would say that, you know, the Obito that wasn't there to help his comrades is fake as well. You know, just having his little Obito speech, as at this point, we kind of just have it to where Naruto is just like, at a loss and when obito returns he has kakashi's head in his hands naruto seeing this would just go berserk as he would essentially be inside of his mindscape as he would completely rip off the seal like when minato's body appeared in front of him naruto would be so angry he completely just dispersed minato's like chakra the last thing he had to speak to his father and he like opened the thing causing kurama to break out and kurama would try like he, like kurama tried to like ho naruto and just kind of like not give him his chakra but naruto in his mindscape sat the nine tails down and told him nah i need this and naruto would activate kcm1 as you know kakash he would basically have to fight against his himself internally for the nine tails not to break out and when it comes to that we basically just have naruto breaking the limit and going even stronger with his eternal mangekyo sharingan abilities he would stop obito in place for 10 seconds long enough for naruto to be able to charge up a gigantic attack Naruto would using the susana would just basically slice obito's body in half and Obito, he died. When it comes to the paths of pain, Guy would have just barely been able to handle them all by himself. And then we just have Naruto like just being like, why did this have to happen to you, Kakashi? As he would essentially just think that maybe there's a way he can rewind. As you know, Naruto then realizes that his head is completely severed. 
Not only that, but the only way to get into the Kamui dimension is by using that portal that he had, which Naruto does not have access to. So Naruto would just fall to his knees realizing what just happened. But then, this is when Naruto would basically end up going over to Nagato. As they end up having the same talk in canon, Naruto ends up using the talk no jutsu and Nagato brings back like all everybody that was killed in the attack using the Rene Rebirth. As you know, Naruto then basically proceeds to watch as Nagato dies and Nagato would actually gift Naruto his eyes. Naruto would take one of them and keep another one in safekeeping in case he ever needs it, meaning he now has the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan in one eye and the Rinnegan in the other. Pretty broken stuff. Quick question though guys, would you guys be interested in me dropping a what if Naruto had the Rinnegan series? I think it would be pretty lit. And since we're almost close to finishing the video, I think it's about time that I tell you guys about Bunches. Alright, Bunches is a sponsor of the video and what it essentially is, is a place where you guys can go and chat with me, you know what I mean? Like it's an app that you guys can download from the App Store or Play Store and you guys can basically hop on it, create an account and find my... Um, and find my uh, my little server thing. It's kind of like Discord, but not really. It's kind of a new app where you guys can just go on there and meet people and join groups. So what you do is you basically go to the app store, download bunches, and then you sign up by creating a free account. Afterwards, you should see like a little location looking thing as you tap on that. And then you're gonna just see a thing that says discover bunches. You click on that and you're gonna wanna type Olympus since that's the name of the, the chat that I created. And as of now, we have 40 out of 50 members so there's only 10 slots left for anybody to be able to actually join so if you've ever wanted to talk to me or simply just be in a cool community then i would suggest joining but as i said options are pretty limited so if i was you i would like go now link below down in the description as well as the top pin chant uh comment down below with that being said though guys let's get back into the video okay so um now that that was established we now have to talk about what happens after this. After this, we essentially just kind of have Naruto rushing over to Kakashi as he gives Kakashi like one of the biggest hugs. Now, Guy died too, so he got brought he got Brock back too, and literally nobody ended up dying in this time. Like nobody at all. So everything was kind of fine and for the following like years they basically end up rebuilding the village they all end up relaxing until sasuke finally returns to the village thinking that he's now strong but he's literally like just as strong as he was in the canon and naruto at this point has already handled the akatsuki so when the battle comes to sasuke like arrives at the village saying that naruto is doomed that he's finally going to be able to defeat him and that he's going to kill him for taking out his brother his mission that was his battle not not naruto's he's just some adopted kid he's not even part of the family Naruto would tell him that he never chose to be there and he would just body Sasuke as he basically has Sasuke in death's door Sasuke would just yell out a scream as he would say damn it damn it damn it you know he would just yell at Naruto as he would say why did you have to come into our lives you ruined everything why as he would just bang at the ground and Naruto would look at him as Sasuke would just say, You always had to sit there and overshadow me, taking the attention of my father, my brother, my mother. You took everything from me. The day that I lost my parents wasn't the day that Itachi killed them. It was the day that you were brought into our house. As essentially... Naruto hearing these words would kind of just pause as that kind of just hurt him. It's it's one of those scars that you can't see that hurt him emotionally like really bad. And Naruto just seeing this would kind of just get angry and like just shivering from how much rage he's feeling inside. Sasuke would look at him as he would say, do it. Kill me. Do it now. You might as well. I haven't been alive. I never have. As he would just look at him, and Naruto would just be holding Shisui's blade to Sasuke's neck. As Sasuke would say, if you won't do it, I will, you coward. As he would just smash his neck into the knife, and Sasuke would die. Sasuke would be dead. And Naruto, with one final tear going down to the ground, would just accept what Sasuke picked for himself. That's a fate that Sasuke chose. Naruto would have let Sasuke survive, but... Sasuke decided to do what he thought was, well, the only way to go out, as that 
is where what if naruto was a new chiha is going to be ending boys i hope you guys enjoyed today's part as you know i think it was pretty good i took a pretty decent amount of time on this story i think it actually came out well let me know what you guys think down below in the comments as well as make make sure to go join bunches down below i hope that this final part of what if naruto was a new chiha was actually well worth the wait but with that being said i love each and every single one of you guys it has been your boy zether and i am out peace